Town and Trustee Denton. Um, Trustee Denton and I'm here. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I meant. Yes. Trustee Pearson and uh, Trustee Denton and Trustee Henyard is en route. So if we get started, um, if you would um, please call to order. Trustee Muhammad? Here. Trustee Stubbs? Present. Trustee House? Present. Okay. Okay, if we could uh, do the Pledge of Allegiance and um, Ms. Stubbs, if you would do the um, prayer after that. Thank you. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, Father, give us wisdom and knowledge, not only in your word, but in doing this budget, so we can do the right thing for the people of this village. I just want to thank you, let you know that I adore you, and to give us safe passage back to our houses, and this, if we have any bereaved families among us, then bless them and watch over them too. Watch over Matthew and his watch over Matthew's family father and give them the strength to keep pushing on to do the right thing in your name. Thank you and I adore you. Amen. 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 Thank you Trustee Stubbs. Um, for the first presentation under Old Business, can we have Melanie Fitness take the uh, podium and give us their uh, budget presentation please. If I don't know. <laughs> And trustees and mayor in his absence and everyone. So, um, I believe everyone has the budgets that was turned in. I'm not sure if yes, sir. Everyone has okay. Um, so looking at our uh, Melanie Fitness Center budget for uh, the fiscal year of 17 and 18, um, there, there wasn't many changes um, in the budget as far as uh, the only pretty much the new things were the fitness center equipment and as some of you or all of you may know, the recent activity with the Cook County inspectors and the things that we have listed that we must complete in order to uh, keep our pool license in order. Uh, I have one. I can make copies. Can we make copies? Can I have? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. May I have a copy of that? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Pretty much on the seats. These two. So I think if you make those two, two, three. Miss Mayor, is it making copies for you right now? Um, so our budget last year for the 16 17 fiscal year was at three, uh, $356,986. There was a $5,435 cut from that budget, which brings the fiscal year of 1718 to $351,551. Now, <clears throat> as I stated, there's not many changes from that budget. Um, 
I did present with the rate of pay and the breakdown for the Melanie Fitness Center employees and independent contractors. If I can, I want to see. I want to ask if I can excuse for one moment because I think I'm looking at something a little bit different than the budget you're proposing right now. Yes, sir. Uh, Ms. Redman, I was looking on the previous one. It was page 10 and 11. Are we looking at the same document? Because the figures that you had were 350,000, and I'm looking at a revenue source of 263,000. Okay. I'm sorry, mate. Man, hold on one second while I get the correct sheet. Thank you. So, trustees, I, I'd like to apologize. Um, I, I did not have the correct budget. There were some adjustments that, that were made um, to the original budget that I turned in. So, I apologize. And, of course, this one is slightly under the, the numbers that you all should have. Ms. Rutman, this is the same budget that we all have. Nothing's changed from that, correct? Okay. Okay. So, would you all like to go down the line items? Or? Yes, sir. Uh, so, our, the first line item would be our uh, salaries and wages. Um, we are we have it set this year uh, for seventy-eight thousand four hundred and forty dollars. Uh, that would include myself and two other staff members. Um, as you should know, the remaining staff members at Melanie Fitness are all independent contractors, so they would be under a different. Uh, Line item. Question for the uh, staff: Any um, staff members paying minimum, being paid minimum wage as we speak? No, sir. Not at the not current. Not one. Not one. Okay. They're above. Or? They're above minimum wage. I'm sorry, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. I don't want to use a name, but you have a personal janitorial. That person then got an increase because that individual was minimum wage. I don't want to say his name, but think about it when you check Pro it out. Yes, sir. Um, I do understand. And give me one second because you might be right, but I, I believe he he was given a raise. Where is he? If so, was it in the upcoming budget or the last budget? Because the warrant list that we received, you might have it. Um, that individual, without mentioning his name, do you know the person I'm referring to? Yes, sir, I do. Eight twenty-five. Oh, uh, okay. And minimum wage is what? I, I believe he's still at 825, sir. So he is minimum wage. The reason why I ask is because we have an issue coming up 
concerning um, minimum wage. So as far as employees, only the one then is minimum wage. Yes, okay. sir. Thank you. And while we're there, do you know the membership number of the club? Um, I don't have it uh, per se at this very moment. Uh, we did have someone recently do a uh, free uh, Freedom of uh, Information Act and I had to present that uh, and I did not bring that with me. So I can have that for you in an email and um, it by tomorrow morning or tonight. Uh, line items uh, under do I skip? I'm, I'm sorry. Do I, do I skip down to the office supplies because we don't? You can start with the 500 series. I'll, I'll 500. take everything else. Yes, ma'am. Um, so under line item 512, we have uh, repair and maintenance. Uh, that's pretty much going to stay the same at 15,000. Well, uh, question on that also. Yes, sir. Has any? What's the status of the women's spa, um, Scott? Gilbert put in a request over a year ago to have um, repairs done on that. Do you know what the status of that is? Uh, as far as I know, Mr. Gilmore has, uh, Mr. Gilmore and Ken Gray have uh, been in correspondence with, with each other since the time of November when I was there. Um, and I haven't had any problems that were not um, maintenance or repaired he by never the company. told you about the leaking spa on the women's side that needs to be repaired that he's been in contact with Mr. Urban uh, King, you of that. King Ray uh, told me about the leaking spa we had I believe a uh, um, warranty on that and I, I believe they were supposed to I think get that company back out to repair whatever that slow leak was in there because oftentimes we do have to add water. So what is the status of that? The status is unknown at this present time okay. by myself. Um, so as we go down the line uh, 549 professional services, that would uh, include the um, independent contractor salaries uh, as well as the IT proposal. Uh, the independent contractor salaries are at $87,840. And the, uh, the IT um, proposal was for $25,000. That was from, I believe, um, Ms. Redman, who, uh, who did inform me that we had to budget them in this year. So. That was an additional uh, fee that was added to my budget for the year at Melanie Fitness Center. Um, so from last year, there was a, a bit of a difference because a lot of, I noticed as I was going through the budget, a lot of things were not placed in the correct GL numbers. And so everything is in the correct places now for professional services, which would be the reason that it is uh, an extreme change in numbers at $108,833. Um, so we will go down to um, the line item 555, which is the uh, credit card fees. Um, that's at this, the same $3,000. Line item 566 is advertising. Um, that would drop from 10000 from last year's budget to this year at $5,000. Um, being uh, last year, I didn't notice after doing some research, there were too much social media uh, attention. And now I believe instead of um, spending money to advertise different ways, social media right now is the, one of the biggest keys. And so we have been on social media, Facebook, um, uh, Facebook, Instagram, other additional social media outlets where I'm having groups and fitness groups all post and hashtag Melanie Fitness Center. So I've noticed a huge change uh, and uh, kind of an aggressive uh, membership increase with using uh, the, the services of 
uh, the internet. So um, the other 5,000, I would assume would uh, uh, plan to um, have certain events and certain articles placed in the newspaper uh, sponsorships for different events. I believe one young lady came to see me recently for the um, Chamber of Commerce and you know pledging to or uh, submitting in, uh, to have our Melanie Fitness Center ad in those ads or newspapers and things. The next line item 571 is utility payments. Um, that is at 75,000 and those total charges in that 500 series are $206,833. The next is 599 under miscellaneous and other expenses. Um, that is 15,000. Um, and I seen that rise from when I was there for since November, certain pieces of equipment and certain uh, HVAC systems have broken down. And through the information that Scott Gilmore let me know that over times past, certain things were not uh, taken care or care of or had preventative maintenance on it. And so it's just getting toward that time of age where it's breaking down. So that's a little bit higher than it was previously. Um, our capital layout, 830 machinery and equipment. That's um, a little bit different. It's at $14,992 uh, and improvements of $1,000. Those line items are specified as needing new equipment. Um, to be co a competitive in this business, we have to be able to have good working equipment, especially cardio equipment, treadmills, bikes, elliptical machines, and so on. Uh, we're in right now, at this present moment, we're really not in a competitive place. Um, a lot of people are kind of grandfathered there. They love the community, so they care, and they want to be a part. But to be totally honest, since this year, in January, I've picked up a lot of members, and it's already June, and I've lost a lot as well. In the main, um, and I have a stack of comp, uh, complaint forms on my desk, the main complaint is the lack of good working equipment. What has been the response of the village administrator once you've stated your complaint? Um, pretty much just for everything to be in the budget. This is what the budget was for to present everything. Um, I had a I had a maintenance repair guy come out to check the machine, the equipment, but the equipment is, some of the pieces are so old and literally some of the pieces were there since the uh, beginning of Melanie Fitness. Uh, this, there were other pieces that were you know, brought in over time. I, I wanna make sure the answer to my question is this. You're saying that the village administrator cannot repair the w equipment because equipment, you said something to do with budget. Um, no, what was said was that the budget was coming up for this next fiscal year and that w had to be something that I presented to the board. Um, to for equipment. Um, basically, uh, that's why I had the repair guy come out to see what could be fixed, what could be salvaged. When I d he did, you know, I did let him know that he did suggest that. When I did that, the cost of the maintenance of those uh, uh, pieces were high enough to where you could purchase a few pieces of equipment to salvage those so it just didn't make dollars and cents. so the the alternative if i'm hearing you saying it was too costly to repair so you put together a proposal of what it'd be for new equipment yes, sir. which is indicated in your budget here for new equipment yes sir and which line item is that uh that would be under machinery and equipment i mean and give me a gl number so i'm 830 i apologize GL? sir so that's at 9400 dollars. okay and that's all cardio equipment? All that's new or used equipment from a um, place that's uh, refurbished professional uh, commercial fitness equipment. Treadmills, um, pre-core elliptical machines, and bikes. That's for purchase, not lease? For purchase, yes, sir. And they would come with a um, six month, I believe a six month warranty uh, and I have that information that I also can email to you. I apologize, I didn't bring it. Yes, sir. 
question. Is it anywhere where they uh, lease equipment? Yes, ma'am. I have a place and a gentleman that I talked to before, Tim Brennan, uh, Direct Fitness Solutions, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the, the reason that I presented this um, actual fee and cost for the refurbished equipment because I thought it would be more feasible. The lease equipment agreements were pretty high uh, and substantially uh, high to get lease equipment. The best part about the lease equipment is that it all comes with preventative maintenance and that's awesome if you are year to year um, continuously getting new equipment what so have you. Uh, at the present moment, I, I knew or I assume not to <laughs> present that because it was such a big, it would be such a big item for the budget. I, I thought this would be a little bit more feasible at this present moment. Okay, if the equipment that you purchase, uh, you pay the money, the equipment, and this is refurbished equipment, am I correct? Yes, ma'am. You purchase the refurbished equipment, it break down, then we still are in the same boat. We have no equipment. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, if the lease equipment break down, you, correct me if I'm wrong, if you turn it back in, you can get another piece of equipment for the lease equipment, am I correct? Yes, ma'am. It has warranty and preventative maintenance. Yeah, so... I would like to see that. I actually have that. I, I don't have it here, but I, I have all of that already um, okay. uh, grouped out with different options, and I can have that to you tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and then uh, lastly would be just the total um, capital layout, which is $15,992, which brings the whole departmental total to three, $351,551. So what's your deficit projected for 2018? Um, that I'll have to... It's not on your... No, it's, I'm sorry, sir. It's not on here. Um, I did, I, because I, I'm, I'm sorry, I did bring a different um, page than what I had originally given Ms. Radman. Uh, so but I, I can. Is it is the deficit different than what we're seeing here on the, um, I, I got a deficit of $143,600 and some change, is that correct? That's different from what I have. I'm showing a deficit of 114,000. Um, what I will do with what I will do is um, set aside some time tomorrow for me to get the bills and we can go over and to see why I know this difference. Okay. What, was that it? Yes, sir. Okay. Question on the uh, counties. Um, you're going to give us a synopsis of this and what the status of this inspection from the county is, because based on this, we don't have license. Uh, our license actually came today. They did give us issue us a license, um, but it is a conditional license um, until these the items that she the inspector listed, um, and I think she made everyone copies. Um, the first is the license hasn't been approved since uh, May thirteenth, two thousand fourteen, um, and it actually. They did find out that it was um, approved, but it also had a conditional license. Scott Gilmore um, began to make certain um, corrections and f fix certain things that were noted at that time by a different inspector. Uh, so when this inspector came out, she had no knowledge that we had a license or a license was ever issued. Um, to date, uh, item 69 was the emergency line phone that's connected to the fire department has not been operable since 513-14. If it cannot be repaired, remove call, remove call box and sign temporary, replace with a signal indicator 
uh, or some type of phone device that would get to an emergency line. That has since been repaired. Uh, Scott Gilmore and myself uh, were out there while the, the phone company came out and repaired it. So that same emergency line pushes straight to the F Dalton or straight to the 911. Um, and the gates to the waiting pool were not self-closing. Uh, Scott Gilmore placed self-closing mechanisms on them. Um, that was complete. I think he's going to do a little bit more uh, construction on, on the way that the gates close. But as far as what the inspector indicated and desired complete, it has been. Uh, the pH levels in the waiting pool was below uh, 6.6 .6 ppm. So what we did was close the waiting pool. We since um, uh, drained the waiting pool, there were some cracks in the waiting pool that uh, Mr. Gray and Mr. Gilmore were both uh, replacing or repairing and getting ready to repaint and make that pool uh, available for usage. Um, I don't, know, I don't know if this was the actual meeting for the, I guess he, I know him and Mr. Urban both said that I had to be there today for a, uh, I guess the proposal that they asked for uh, was some somewhere, I think like $4,000 to repair those things. Um, but that wasn't including the chlorinator. I think that's what, I believe that's what it's called not really good with the pools or not knowledgeable in that way uh, but I think it's called it chlorinator and that is what the waiting pool has to have in order to be operable to the inspectors um, because at this moment it, it's not and I think that is an additional cost uh, as well uh, the discharge gauges were not visible so I think they're uh, they're getting ready to do that uh, next, the flow rate of the pool is required. Um, I believe that takes a big part of what that $4,000 was for uh, to f correct the lighting in the pool. And um, I believe at the end of the pool, a certain it has to be at a certain length or it cannot drop below a, a, a specific number in order for that pool to have the license. So that's pretty much uh, those last few items are not taken care of at this present moment. So the answer to my question is out of the violations, we've corrected two. We've, yes, we've, yes, sir. So uh, in order for us to be in compliance, what is the time frame in which all of these things will be done so we're in compliance with the county, public department of health? They, they didn't actually give a specific time uh, what she did say was that she would be coming back out uh, in the near future and of course if she doesn't find uh, those items being taken care of uh, having been taken care of or we are making some type of um, we're making some type of leeway with it then of course our license will be revoked and she didn't give a time frame? She did not give a time frame. Um, she didn't give an official time frame. What she told me was like when I asked her of a time frame, she said, you know, well, we typically give people somewhere between, you know, 30 and 60 days. But again, that wasn't an official time frame. And the 30 or 60 days would be from the date of her inspection, which was April 27th? Which was? The date I'm looking at at the top right. 427 that's date of inspection yes sir. no this would have there's a date on the front page yes sir i see the date but that's this is miss tina wilson um she had a there was another young lady that was the first inspection there was another lady uh, uh inspector who came back out not even two weeks ago no documentation on her inspection? Uh, yes, this is sir. All, this is all we have is this, unless we're missing something else. Uh, we, we might have the, the um, and I apologize, we might have the different uh, inspection reports. You may have the updated, this is Miss Tina Wilson, Inspector Tina Wilson. You may have the most current. 
this is dated April 27. You okay. have one so after April, this? No, sir. That's that's it. So I'm saying if it's 30 to 60 days after inspection date, that would be that would take us to the end of June. That she might possibly come back. I mean, if that was something mentioned off record. My concern is, w will we be able to get up to um, spec so that we can pass inspection by the end of June? Was that contingent upon the budget or what? I believe that's contingent upon the approval of those. For, uh, I believe that four thousand dollar fund um, to complete everything that is on this list from the pool area. Mr. Chair, can I make a recommendation? Uh, I would suggest that we do that. We come up with our own plan of how long it's going to take us, and be proactive in terms of reaching out to the county and say, "This is our timeline. Is that acceptable to you?" Because it sounds like they're not being um, defi definitive with their time. Yes, sir. So let's get ahead of the curve on that one. Yes, sir. Also, we'd like to state for the record, Trustee Henyard is here, um, Madam Clerk. Is there anything else? Uh, can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. So everything on this list that you gave us, is this all included in the $4,000, everything that's on this list? Um, the only thing that Mr. Gilmore had said was that the $4,000 was the, the suggested uh, amount. He did say that it, there's a possibility that it wouldn't cost that much, but that's what he wanted to uh, budget just in case. Uh, but again, he did also say that that did not include the chlorinator for the wading pool. So the answer to my question is no. That would seem to be yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, one more question. So if, if the answer to my question is no, then we need to know exactly what it would cost to pass this inspection. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Okay. I had questions around because it sounds like our deficit is somewhere between 114,000 to 143 in that range. It looks like the sales is what's going to be the opportunity, if, if any at all, to get out of the deficit. How, wh what kind of memberships, how many memberships on, on average are we getting each month and how many people are we losing? Um, so right now it seems that I, so probably around January of this year, I probably picked up close to 200 members just in January. Um, of that 200, I would have to do some definite research to get a, a positive active member count. Um, we were doing, we did promotions with month to month uh, options, which boosted membership, of course. But then again, like I said, because we did not have proper working equipment and that was the, one of the biggest complaints from members. A lot of members have not uh, returned or um, done uh, or signed up for a, a new month-to-month -month membership. So possibly we may have lost them. As far as the sales go, uh, I think the sales are could be competitive. Our biggest problem is equipment. I think when you put together the membership list that I asked for, you have to put it in categories so that the board can understand that these memberships that you mentioned are not yearly membership necessarily. Yes, sir. They, will all be they may be gone in 90 days, 60, 30, whatever. Also, you have discounted rates, which are the silver sneakers, which is yes, sir. technically not a discounted rate because you still have the insurance companies paying those. But for seniors and military, whatever, so that we can know, because if we say yes, we got 800 members, that doesn't mean we got 800 members locked for that year. It's yes, sir. 20 or so, maybe um, 30 day or whatever. Is there a way when you put together that Absolutely. Uh, spreadsheet that everyone can see it, understand? Because as Trusty House is saying, the thing to reduce the membership, uh, I'm sorry, the deficit is increasing membership. Mm -hmm. But we have no idea what the membership number is, number one, and number two, the type of memberships that we have. Yes, is sir. it possible to submit? Absolutely, I can, I can present a, a breakdown for you all. Um, and, and if I can add, 
Um, the, it's, the memberships are just one part of revenue. The other part would be uh, some of our areas that we have that are not in usage that could yield revenue. For example, we have a juice bar uh, that's not in use. We have another area that you can use for uh, uh, some type of retail venue. Uh, I have attempted to get people in, um, but we have not been successful with that. Um, as well as the juice bar has a, it has quite a bit of um, issues and things need to be fixed. A lot of things are just breaking down over there, and so it's hard to generate that revenue by using those, um, using the entire facility that could be used as a, a great place to bring in revenue for the Village of Dog. Scott Gilmore, can he fix any of um, the juice bar, whatever you need uh, over yeah. there? Can he fix it? Yes, ma'am. I believe Scott Gilmore, Mr. Gilmore can pretty much fix anything. Um, the problem hasn't been Mr. Gilmore fixing things. It's just I, I believe the time in which he can fix it. Um, I, I got there at, uh, if I may say, I got there at November 7th of 2016. When I, the first day I, I walked in, I walked around and checked out everything, uh, and I noticed quite a bit of things that were wrong. For example, when you first walked in the door, there was wallpaper hanging off the wall. There was mold behind the wallpaper. That did not get fixed, and I submitted a work order. I trained the 7th, 8th, and 9th. I submitted a work order on the 10th of November. That did not get fixed until February of this year. Who did you submit it to? Uh, Elizabeth, um, downstairs. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Just so the board understands, any uh, work has to be done. Um, he has to submit a work order to the mayor's office. To the mayor's office, yes. And the mayor's office distributes those work orders, whether it be Public Works or Scott Gilmore. Is that still the procedure? Uh, as far as I believe, uh, well, that's what, what I was taught to do, was to submit those work orders in. and. Um, I believe if it was a certain number, or I think you all, the board had to approve or not. Uh, also, I, I, I'm not, I haven't been sure who or what trustee uh, come to the Melanie Center. Uh, I, I believe you were there before, so I haven't uh, had anyone come check on the Melanie Center. To, well, to that has changed. There is no board member that is chair of that facility. It's okay. ran completely by the village administrator. That's why I ask, yes, sir. Okay. what's his follow-up been with you when you've reported things, and such as a PO, uh, not a purchase order, but a, a work order. Your follow-up is not with the mayor's office, but it's with the village administrator. Is that correct? Does yes, sir. He, it has been. Yes, sir. Done? So yes, that's sir. your point person with the village has been helped okay. since November. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. If there are no more questions, thank you. Welcome. This media center. How's everybody doing today? Give me a second to set up my PowerPoint. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? My name's Edward Steve, trustees, uh, village staff, residents. Mine's going to be quick. We're going to go through the media center, show what I've done uh, with, with the budget this past year, what I've spent, and then uh, potential revenue sources and potential revenue sources for the media center. So the first, of course, the, the top part is the salaries and the tax and the 
uh, IMRF. So we're going to go straight to uh, 549, which is other professional services, which 2017 we budgeted $6,000, and I actually spent $6,166. I'm proposing for next year to do another $6,000. And other professional services is, what I use it for is either extra cameraman, if, I, if I'm off one day, because y'all know I do everything when I'm recording the board meeting, live streaming it. So if I'm off, I can pay somebody, uh, sound guys. That's what I use my other professional service budget for. The next one is uh, publishing, which we propose 2017 was $1,000. I spent $529. I'm proposing another $1,000. What I use this for is Facebook sponsoring ads. And the reach of our Facebook page is really bananas because you really reach a lot of people. And it breaks down the numbers, how many people you reach, how many people clicked on it, how long they watched the video. When we do our job fairs, I usually put a video together and we sponsor the ad for maybe $20 for seven days. And we roughly get about five to 6,000 views. And then when I get there, I kind of poll the people. How did you find out? How did you find out? Majority of them say, I seen it on Facebook. I seen it on Facebook. So that's what the publishing uh, budget is for. I sponsor Facebook, ad, Facebook ads. And I'm proposing another $1,000 this year to help promote um, on social media the stuff, that is, the stuff that is good going on in the village. Travel expenses. Um, I see I didn't use nothing of traffic. So maybe I should have. Yes, yes, ma'am. Can, can we back up on the last thing you just stated? Yes. You said you sponsored the ad, so you don't have someone pay you to go on Facebook? Explain. What happens is on a, on a Facebook page, not a personal page, but a village page or, or a business page, you can, with every, anytime you put something on, your, even I think you have a trustee, Tiffany, in your page, right? When you post something, it has boost at the bottom. You click the boost and you pay for, uh, uh, you set the demographics which you wanted to reach. You set the age bracket, the interest that people are into, and you set it for 20, maybe seven days and you pay $20. And that's, that's what we do to help promote what's going on in the village, to help promote participation. And majority of people, like I said, majority of people that find out about what's going on, especially our job fairs, come from us boosting our ads and it breaks down the reach and it breaks down the numbers. I had to study what it meant, but it breaks down how many people actually clicked on it. And then if anybody on Facebook, you know when you're scrolling, you see stuff, and it shows you how many people actually seen it on the wall while they're scrolling. Right, so but that's what trying the, to reach other people from other communities. I'm trying to reach, well, residents. no, what happens is on the demographics, I set it for the south suburbs. So you can put Dalton, I put all the surrounding suburbs, and I put Chicago. So I make sure it, it reaches all the south suburbs. I put South Holland, I put all the surrounding suburbs close so people who are in this area know what's going on. So was there anything in particular that was really beneficial for us spending that kind of budget for that? I think the beneficial part was our um, job fairs. When we did a job, when we did our job fairs and I sponsored the ad, majority of the people found out through Facebook. We did the R Dog hiring event, I, I, 80 percent of the people I've talked to found out through Facebook. And then uh, every job fair I do, I always ask, and majority of them say, well, I've seen it on Facebook. I've seen it on Facebook. So that was the benefit of sponsoring the ads, the reach of people. And people not only in um, Dalton, but just people around see it, see see what's going on. Because I know what people who know me that live, work in Dalton, they say, I've seen that stuff on Facebook. I've seen y'all had a job fair out there on Facebook. So it's just the reach of people seeing what we're doing. That's what it helps. Right. I'm for that. It's just mm -hmm. that I'm really for the people here in Dalton. Mm -hmm. I, I I do care that other people see stuff, but really, I want you to target us. Well, that's the the the, the the primary demographic that I said is Dalton. That's the that's when you when you when you go on your page, you can set up the demographics and the reach that you wanted to reach. The okay. five dollars. Do you raising? think you need that thousand dollar budget, or it seems like you spent five hundred and twenty nine dollars? So I mean, I, I, it helps. It definitely helps. So do you think this year you're going to spend $1,000 or do you think you're going to still be around the $500 range? Well, I spent $500 last year, but I would like to have that cushion. But if y'all want to cut it to $500, I can use $1,000. But if, if I only spent $529 and it was very effective, if you feel we need to cut it to $500, that's fine with me. But as long as there's some money there for me to use for that. All right. Travel expenses, as you see, you, I didn't use no travel expenses. You can, y'all can cut that out. That's for gas or something like that. But I don't. I just pay for my own gas. 
Other miscellaneous expenses, uh, uh, 2000 was the budget for 2017. What I actually spent was 1500 I'm proposing 1700 uh, uh this year to move forward. Other miscellaneous expenses are things that may uh, come up uh, as, as a cushion if I need. Uh, sometimes a, a camera may break down if I need to go put it in a shop. Something like that that helps me, that gives me a little cushion if something happens and I can break, I can get it paid for and handle it. Office supplies, I went a little bit over this budget, but uh, this this year uh, I bought a, I needed a printer downstairs. So I have to keep asking if Mary and other people know, I kind of asked them, could you print this, print this? So I bought a printer for the actual media center downstairs. Okay, um, now for yes. that, I know we were just speaking about having a centralized station near you to buy all the supplies. So yes. that I probably am going to suggest the board cut that budget for all the supplies and everybody get it from one department. That's fine. So I'm just letting you know. Okay. Operating ex expenses, um, um, 1500 budget, I spent 596 So I'm proposing another 1500 for operating expenses. Um, that's for, you know, um, SD cards, things for cameras, things, technical things. If my computer breaks down, if I need an extra hard drive for my computer, storage space, I've ran through, since I've been here, I've ran through maybe 12 terabytes of space. So I usually use this to get me more space and more, more, uh, more space for all the footage, other things that we shoot. Purchasing new equipment, um, the budget last year was 15,500. I spent 15,936. I'm proposing this year $5,000. Um, I'm pretty much set, I ain't gonna say set, I can always use more equipment, but I'm set what I, what I do. And later on in my presentation, there's a way that this PEG uh, channel, the cable access channel generates revenue. So it doesn't, we shouldn't have to put nothing to the equipment budget. The money that it generates should come right back to the media center and you just put it back into the media center by buying equipment. Ed, I have a question yes, for you. Just like I'm looking at someone is being interviewed mm -hmm. uh, on the screen. When people come in to use the media center, do you all charge anybody for using our studio? No, no. I put that picture there because one of the... Um Biggest things that when I since I got here from the last media center, you remember they used to have programs and shows and information given to the public. So this past year, I st we started a show called Take Another Look, which is a public affairs show, and that's a set. Now, the shows that we do, you a shot sets it up. He usually sets up the, the interviews, and we come in. But nobody has came in from the outside. One person came in and asked, but I don't know the I don't know the uh, the. Uh, right how the red tape of charging somebody. We could, but I don't know the uh, actual legal way we can charge somebody to come in and use the studio and rent it out. I mean, it's, it's, it's able to be, rent, 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 to be rented out, uh, but I don't know the legal way to do it where the village can get money from it. And we can, I can look into it. I talked to uh, the administrator about it before. We just have to look into it legally, how right. to properly do that. Can you, can you, uh Look into that legally, yes, ma'am, and see how we can possibly, uh, if it's if the other trustees agree to rent it out because it's a very nice studio, and uh, either even our neighbors, uh, Riverdale, they might yeah. uh, want to use it and rent it out, yeah. you know, the mayor's office over there, yes or any other municipality or any business and I know we also do shop Dalton where we go out yep. and uh, videotape local businesses local businesses and perhaps some other villages or business owners might want to um, rent it out rent it out to utilize it for their business you know I if the other trustees agree then I think that's a pretty good that can idea be a good revenue source to uh, do uh, build up our revenue. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm you. definitely looking to that. Thank you, sir. Uh, now this is the uh, thing I was talking about revenue source. Right now, Comcast charges each user 35 cent per user for having Channel Four. Since I've been here, that hasn't been coming directly to the media center. 
I went to other villages and looked at, when I first got, I looked at other villages who have media departments and I asked them, how do you pay for all this equipment? They say, we get a portion of each bill and you should be getting that so you can put it back into your budget. Um, so from January to March, the payment was $3,544 to the village. So moving forward over a year, that's $14,000. So moving forward, I'm I will hope the board will say that money should come straight to the media center. And each month, each year, the, budget, the, the village doesn't have to budget a money for the equipment. The actual cable access channel will produce that money. And you can, you can have a good $15,000 to, to improve it every year, to improve what's going on in, in the media center up here digitally, vid, video-wise, audio-wise. You can have that money to invest back in. And right now, I'm checking with AT&T, because we're on Comcast and AT&T, and I'm checking to see what their pack fees is. So that might be an additional uh, money to this 14000 So I'm hoping moving forward that that money will come straight to the media center so the village doesn't have to budget money to buy equipment and stuff like that. And then uh, potential revenue sources that we could advertise on our website. Now our website gets about 700 hits a day, Monday through Friday. Now big, big Big companies are not going to promote, not going to pay for 700 hits a day. That's not a lot. So smaller companies will uh, um, will pay for that. So it's just about me coming up with a plan. What will be a reasonable plan? What would be reasonable to uh, get out here to talk to these businesses? How much would you pay to advertise on our website? We can create an ad on the website that people go to. Our highest visit visits right now are between the directory and water bills right now this week. Mainly is water bills. Majority of people pay their water bills online. So, uh, but uh, we, c we can set something to um, advertise on a website and generate revenue that way as well. And if there's no other questions, uh, I would like to, being that I'm a, a video guy, I would like to show you a video. Can I ask one question yes. about the additional revenue? You said 3500 from Comcast. Comcast. Are we currently getting that and that's going into the general fund or are we, and you're saying reappropriate re that? Yes, that, that's media? going strictly to the general fund now. Okay. I asked about it before to the administrator, but. Ed, um, yes. are you, you over the Sentinel too? Like, no. Is that in your budget? Okay. No. Okay. I just do all the pictures for the set, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> so this is a video to kind of cover some of the things I've done over this past past year. Of course, you know we live stream our board meetings, which is a big a big hit for our village. Soul Train Line video on Facebook has reached over, oh, I think, 2 million people. So they seen you going out of Soul Train Line, trustee. So that's a, uh, a visual display of what I've done 
uh, what God blessed me to do over this past year, two years. And with the addition of Mr. Trish, which has been a big help, we can do the public affairs show, we can do the interviews, we can do the things that people actually, when we put a show up, we put talk, we put Shop Dalton up, or we put Take Another Look, you know it has an effect because people start calling. And say, I've seen that show. What's about the information from here? Or you talk to the business owner. They say, yeah, people came in and said they've seen it on Channel 4. So it's being, a, being effective as well. All right. Any more? Any questions? Yeah. Yes. Um, Edward, maybe I blinked. Uh, what was the cancer walk at? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You're yeah. right. Yeah. You're right. I, and I, you know, <laughs> I didn't put it on this. I didn't put it on this actual video. But this year, uh, trustee, I look forward to uh, getting out there and shooting the whole thing. All right. All right. Appreciate it. <laughs> any questions? All right. Thank you. Okay, finance, Ms. Redman. Do you have any objection if I stay here since I'm going to do finance and admin? Okay. So for the finance department, we have salaries, which would include my salary and two part-time positions that I'm currently advertising for on the Village's website. The next three line items are specifically tied to my salary. Next, we will have 0125563 for training. The $2,000 is requested. Um, we currently use a system called, a software called Locus. Locus is looking to upgrade their system. We're, they're currently using version number seven and they want to update to version number eight. So there will be some training associated with that upgrade. 594 organizational uh, memberships. I requested 2,000 so that I can join um, ILCMA. I will um, knock that down to, I will reduce that to $1,000. That should include the membership fee for myself for IGFOA. So I will, I'm reducing that $2,000 to 1,000. I'm sorry, wrong one, to 500. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. Um, next is uh, 25651. Um, that is for office supplies, 1500. Um, if allowed, I will cut that to 500 to reduce that expense. And we would just have to make do with what we have already. Are there any questions regarding finance department? Yes, the status of the two part timers. I know you just said we advertise any timeline or when you think we can lock that down or was it open-ended no actually I put a deadline of June 30th I have been getting a couple of people that are interest well that have expressed an interest however most of the people are looking for full-time positions um, with benefits so all right thank you anything else on finance no did you want to go to the next one administration yes so please don't beat me up on this. I'm just filling in for our village administrator on this one. On our budget, is that the like very first sheet or um, yes. items number? Starting with 0112. Mm -hmm. It should be on page two of 11. Before I jump into the 500 series, which includes the maintenance, um, are there any questions pertaining to salaries or any fringes associated with salaries before I move on for general administration? Okay, moving right along. So for 0112-511, Maintenance, we are requesting $9,000. Um, that is for upkeep of uh, this building. Next, we will have 512. We're requesting 3,000. Slight increase from last year's budget of 2,000. Um, that is for any equipment that we need to maintain um, this building. Next is 531 auditing. That is decrease um, 
to a third for 60,000. We currently have a contract with Ladebach and Amen for 30, 36,000. Um, that additional 24,000 has been earmarked for Kasparic Group. Um, if you notice the last year, the budget, I'm sorry, uh, budget was, uh, we went over budget for the auditing line item um, that was tied specifically to completing three audits in one fiscal year, in one year. Next, we have legal services. Um, that budget is for $300,000. That includes fees for Olison and Sturk, um, John Murphy's office, Dennis Giannopoulos. Everything associated with attorney fees will be in that line item. Next, we have 0112531. That is medical services and drug testing. The budget for that is $20,000. Um, that includes any new employees as well as current employees they may have to go in for testing. 0112536 is janitorial services. Um, I believe on your budget you all had $25,000. That will be reduced. Chief Collins will be making a presentation this evening to the board. Um, we want to move forward with um, someone different than the old, other vendor that we were using. So that presentation will be made tonight so that you all can vote on that and we can move forward. Um, it looks as though it may be around the $8,000 range though. Next we have I have, one, one, I have a question for yes, you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, do you know who's presently cleaning the facilities now? I believe the village administrator had um, suggested that Public Works comes over and cleans the building. Um, staff has been notified that they have to take care of their own trash at their desk. But we were told that um, the previous janitorial service was dismissed immediately As so may 31st that is and correct. public works has stepped in since the end of may that was the suggestion i'm confused you say it suggestion or was that an assignment that public works if you can answer the question that public works was giving to take one of the employees assign one of the employees to come and do um, cleanup. That is correct. It was assigned to Public Works. I'm not sure of how many days. I know that um, the, the previous vendor was here two days a week, and I'm not sure if Public Works is supposed to pick up the same workload or not. Uh, Janice, is it possible? Hi. Can you, you're so good about checking on things <laughs> and getting back with us. Can you check on that for me and find out how many days they come over, clean the washroom, so on and so forth. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Pleasure. So next we have 0112549. That is other professional services. That includes our fees for IT, um, any payments that due to MCOA, as well as payments to Robertson Engineering. 01-12-550, our, our bank fees, which we really have no control over those. Um, 01-12-551, postage and mailing, we are requesting $6,000. That includes postage for all of the mailings for the village. Question, I'm sorry, on bank fees, and it reminds me of credit cards. We were supposed to get a change in um, credit card. It was some issue with the mayor and the um, not having his name on it. And the last we heard was you know, there would be some follow through from Mr. Urban. Do you know the status of the credit card situation? With I think it was with MB Bank, if I'm yes. not mistaken. So we have been issued commercial credit cards. The cards have the name of Village of Dalton, Village of Dalton, whereas before it may have had um, Stan Urban, Village of Dalton. Now there's no name tied, no name on the credit card at all. One of the conditions of getting the card that way is that we have to set up on auto direct pay. So. Whereas we used to get a statement and we have to pay that, you will see it on the warrant. Now they go into directly into our account on the tenth of every month and to pay for those services. So those it, it's one credit. It may be multiple credit cards, but it's one credit card account. Or how does that work? That is correct. So department heads have a credit card. Who who's in possession of these credit cards? The mayor's office as well as administration, administrative office. Okay, so they're just two credit cards. Yes. Okay, when you say the mayor's office, who is the individual responsible uh, to have that card on their possession when you say the mayor's office? I gave the card um, directly to Elizabeth Scott. So is 
Is Elizabeth Scott an authorized user of the card? Is it the mayor, or how does that work? Because that was the issue in the very beginning. Right, because it's under the village's name, um, basically any department head could use it if they need to. So when a charge is made on the card on the line item, it won't show who the individual is because it's generic Village of Dalton. Well, do we know if it, it comes out of the mayor's office? Do we comes out of the village administrator's if office? If you use it, you have to sign for it. Um, I set it up so that you do not, you cannot use a pin number for it. You have to actually sign for it. Um, when a department head or whoever uses the card, they have to bring me a receipt because I have to attach the receipt along to the statement that I can get online. Um, that was one of the things that the auditors recommended that we have to ha practice good auditing. Um, we have to have good auditing practices. So we have to show um, receipts for all purchases. And every charge would show that individual who used the card. But I, what uh, I'm trying to get to the authorized users, which is internal, not through the bank, right? Because mm -hmm. you said it's generic when you say Village of Dalton. Um, is there a list of authorized users internally that have access and use these cards outside of Elizabeth, Scott, and um, Stan Urban. The card is for use for um, all department heads if they need something. Okay, and they would have to have their signature to that particular line item or charge that you would Correct. have the invoice. They for. would have to sign off um, on the receipt, and the receipt has to be brought back to me. Now, as you know, you mentioned auditor. There's supposed to be a policy in place concerning the credit cards, check cashing, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Do we have a policy in place that's um, saying what you're saying yes. or is it still kind of loose or what we have a written policy or it's just a verbal policy it's a verbal policy it's one that is basically understood mm -hmm. that you have to submit your receipts and the department heads will tell you if they do not submit it once I get the statement I will go and I will hound you and I because I have to make sure that we have the receipt I think for the future we should get a written policy because you just said something it's understood and you know our, our biggest problem is misunderstanding so it might be something you may want to you and the mayor's office and village administrator's office get some type of written policy so that we can have it so when the auditors do come back I know if we tell them we have a verbal policy what that grade would be so something to take under consideration. Yes, sir. I have a question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, trustee. <laughs> to my knowledge, the department heads, do they get authorization to use the credit card? Where is the credit card being held? I mean, is it multiple credit cards? Is it two credit cards? Do they get authorization for a purchase such as all the purchases as they did with the uh, new lawn mowers? Do they get authorization from the administrator to go purchase this? And is that authorization in writing? Is it a certain amount that they are allowed it to purchase or how does that work? So the lawnmowers were not purchased on the village um, credit card. Normally when an apartment head goes to Elizabeth or whomever may have the card, it's uh, tied to a particular event. So for example, if we have a special event on a Saturday and someone needs to run over to Food for Less to purchase water or what have you, then the credit card will be used. Um, a receipt is, return is turned in to me immediately. Is the credit card used for material, uh, building supplies, if we need building supplies, if we need toiletries? Is the credit card used for those type of purpose, uh, purchases also? There's no restriction on the credit card. So I'm, what, what I'm getting at is, what's the limit on the credit cards? 25000 25000 Per card? The no, two. per account. We have two cards, it's on one account. If I'm not mistaken, I, if uh, trustees, if you can uh, think back, then we have a limit on the credit cards, what uh, the mayor could use, and if I'm not mistaken, it was like $1,000 that the mayor could use a credit card for, um, and the village administrator, is supposed to be five thousand that they could sign 
uh, up to, if I'm not mistaken, if you uh, recall. I don't yeah. know if Ms. Redman That may be that per what? transaction, but the 25000 is the monthly amount that you can use at at any given time. You can't make a, 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 a purchase of 25000 at one time. The bank will prohibit that. You can't do that. Okay. I believe that it's set up that you can have a daily limit of 5000 or something like that. You can't exceed that at one given time. Okay, and do they, again, get authorization to use the credit card for a purchase of, say, like $5,000? Since I've been looking at it, I have not seen anything near that amount. Um, the highest I think that I've seen has been for the seminars or uh, uh, conferences. Okay. Thank you. My pleasure. Okay. Um, Ms. Remy. Yes. I know everybody asks kind of the same questions, so just to clear it up, um, the village is the only person on the credit card, meaning we have our own credit, correct? Yes. No one had to sign or do a personal guarantee for It's a card. commercial credit card that mm -hmm. says Village of Dalton, Village of Dalton. Okay, That's so no it. one else signed for it with the, to get the credit is what I'm saying. No, it's under the uh, village's tax ID. Okay. Um, when we order cards, why did we not order it in a person's name? What I mean is, for instance, you work for the village and you in charge of getting supplies, so your name will go on that particular card. That way we keep up with who has the cards in their possession. Instead of ordering a card with just the village name on it, I can give it to her, him, anybody I want. Why do we do it that way? If we're limited to two cards, it's basically to contr uh, for internal controls. If you give, have too many cards, that can create an issue. You're chasing multiple people to get receipts. Right, but that's what I'm saying. We got one person that's supposed to go and purchase everything. That one person name will go in that car. For instance, my business. If I have a person that go and buy all my supplies, I add them to my account. So their name will go on a card. So that one person has that card and going to buy all my supplies. So I don't have to look and say, well, you gave the card to Susan today. I don't it, have to look and see who was spending my money because I gave it to one person. That will be up to to the employee if the employee wanted if you wanted to do that add an employee have that employee's name on the card that employee would have to give the personal information some employees don't want their social security number tied to the village it's a business account they want to leave it at that okay i don't get why you keep saying they got to add a social you do not you add a person name and that's it and they add it to the card now they are a signer on the card now so now with mb because you have to have your name your name your social and your date of birth tied to the card mm. if you have an employee's name on it okay i haven't heard that but okay you answered my question i just wanted to make sure there was just the village on the card I just don't like the process of you guys having two cards and everybody gets to use those two cards. Now you have to look at the uh, receipt you get to make sure whoever signed on it was authorized to use the card. That's my issue. I just think we should kind of work on that to kind of make it look better than what it is. Thank you. If I can, I want to, I think I kind of want to echo Trustee Muhammad's um, request for a written policy on there because I think that uh, misunderstandings do and also kind of the Trustee Henyard's point. I, I do I'm familiar with them asking for the social security number, mm -hmm. so I do know that that process happens. But I think if we just have Village Adult and Village Adult on there, it makes it, if there's a fraudulent use on there, it, I think we could be held 100% liable for that transaction. Am I wrong about that? Or? No, you are abs you're correct. So just recently, I did get um, a letter in the mail and a couple of phone calls from the bank. Um, there was fraudulent activity on our account. So the bank is if my if I'm my eyes are not watching the bank have their has their eyes watching they did shut down the account there were two charges that they knew was that we did not uh, make they knew that so they stopped the the account yeah, I I think within I'm gonna tie it back to the written policy but I think I would prefer to to have a person assigned to it or two or three I, I understand some people are hesitant because they don't want their social. I think we just have to look at who the people are, what their job responsibilities, and still kind of tie that to it. Okay. Ms. Redmond. Yes, ma'am. One more thing. If, if they send in uh, what they need to uh, purchase, a purchase order, if they get a handle on a purchase order, I need to purchase this, and we have one centralized location for a purchaser, a person to purchase all of uh, the equipment, with the exception of public works, because they just get a little iffy, and um, you know your your basic toiletries. As a, like I said before, instead of if you buy in bulk, 
is uh, actually cheaper and if one person can do that with the credit card then uh, that will make things better so we can just um, touch down with one individual as opposed to every department head, I need this, here's the credit card, uh, or other employees, I need the credit card, you know, because that doesn't make a lot of sense. And if you sign off, even if you sign off for the credit card, well, I need the credit card because I need to purchase X, Y, and Z. Well, here's the credit card, I need you to sign off for it, bring your invoice, get permission to order what you need. You see where I'm coming from? And if you have a sign off with their signature right there on in the book, date, time that they signed off for it, that would make life much easier from my eyesight. And, and uh, one more thing, I forgot my point. <laughs> um, it'll come back to me in just a second, Ms. Redman. Said about the and card. yes, and and the amount that a department head can spend. But right now we have freeze on it, so they shouldn't be spending anything unless you know it's toiletries and things like that. No, no? purchases have to be approved by the administrator or myself. Okay, well, thank you very kindly. Okay, and um, I forgot the other question, maybe it'll come back to me. Thank you. Anything else in there? All right, moving right along to 0112. 552. So that um, budget amount on here is 350,000. So, yeah, so 350,000, um, that includes is it good? Okay. That includes payments to uh, AT&T as well as Verizon. Next we have, um, previously we had um, a budget for 0112-554 printing, I'm sorry, publishing for 553. That is now combined under 554. Um, that's for our Sentinel, any kind of um, ads that, and any kind of ads and signs will be combined onto 554. 561 is membership uh, dues that includes um, memberships to organizations that uh, the village administrator or any elected officials can belong to, um, also for IMRF. 563 is $6,000 for conferences. 571 utilities, 200,000. Uh, I'm sorry, it was 350000 on the budget that everyone has that has now been decreased to 200000 That is for ComEd and NICOR. Next, we have Insurance 581. Um, that is for our li liability insurance to uh, CCMSI. Next is 592, Special Events and Activities. Um, that includes any stepping at the fountain, uh, Mother's Day brunches, uh, well, lunches, um, coffee with the mayor, anything special activities um, that the villages hold. Next we have uh, 0112 597 on the contractual services. Um, I talked about this at the last meeting last week. Um, that expense is now for dailies and buds. Um, it was not a police and fire expense, it's actually a general admin expense, which is why there's a huge increase of $750,000 for this line item. Next is 598 miscellaneous services. Miscellaneous expense, um, we are budgeting $150,000. Next, office supplies, $651, $12,000. Um, I'm not sure what the change of the central ordering, if that amount is gonna change, that would be a board decision if we all wanna increase that or leave it at leave it steady at the 12,000 as it's currently presented. Is, are we still going through, I, I wanna say Amazon and Staples, are those the primary two suppliers yes. for? Yes. And, and and you may not be the one to answer this uh, since you just represented. Why why did we choose those two? I'm not sure. Yeah, exactly. okay. I don't know. I have a question for you. And that's just for administration 
and what you guys order yes. just for your office. Nobody else is not Melanie Everybody Fitness. has their own separate line item for office supplies. Thank you. Well, you order for um, Melanie Fitness, too, under that. They should have their own. They should be in their own uh, budget. It may be classified under miscellaneous, but it should be separate from ours. Okay. Um, next, you have 0112711. That is for the TAW that was renewed back in December. Um, we still um, have payments due of $1.9 million. Um, also, again, with the condition of the rollover for this TAW, we have to set up automatic uh, deductions so mm -hmm. the bank automatically goes into our account and take out the $122,222.22 every month. Um, lastly will be the interest paid 0112720. That is the interest that is tied to the TAW, the 90000 and that is the budget. Was that being renegotiated? That so actually, I um, reached out to our bank rep last week. Um, he doesn't believe that we can renegotiate that at this point. Um, he will talk over with his higher ups to see, but at this point, it doesn't look like Because you're in the middle of the contract? Or? Right. Okay. I so thought once you got in a year or two, but and we've had it for about a year now, right? Well, the rollover was just in December. Okay. Yeah. So we may not have any wiggle room with that one at this point, but he is going to look and, and see what he can work out. Purchase new equipment. Did you do that one? You got interest paid. We don't have anything. There's nothing for 830. Okay, so it's going to stay at zero. Nope. All right. Are there any other questions? If there are no other questions, thank you, Ms. Redman. And um, new business, there's none. We have a citizen's address for those who would like to address this body. Not, not this body, but the body. That was a joke. You know, fathers have the corniest joke, so. Good evening, board and employees and residents. Allison Key. Um, I want to question the, media, uh, the administration quickly because you just spoke on it, so I had a couple of questions. Um, you did. You said you didn't know what the hundred and fifty thousand was for for other miscellaneous expenses. No, it's not that I know what it's for. If there's anything that, if there's any kind of expenses that come up that don't, that does not follow that fall into the other categories, it basically goes into miscellaneous services. I'm sorry, miscellaneous expense is something that we did not particularly budget for. How do we control that? I mean, because. Um, it appears in a lot of the line items, and you may not be able to answer this, there is a lot of other miscellaneous expenses. So it seems like we're not really controlling our spending if we're always th dumping money into other miscellaneous expenses. How do you control those well, spending? Well, the other alternative would to be is to look at the trend for the last couple of years and see if we maybe need to establish new line items. Yeah, okay, that sounds like a great idea. Um, I did have some questions also about the credit card. And I just need to understand this. For the credit card, so if a department head come and need the credit card, are you charging those charges back to their budget? line item absolutely so I have to do a manual journal entry every month so which is why I need the receipts so that I can know who's charging what so that I can make sure that um, the correct line item is expense and it's not that the general administration fund is uh, taking a hit for all of the purchases and you're also paying attention as to whether or not they're within their budget absolutely okay so if they go over then you don't allow them to use the card well, I won't know. I don't have the card in my possession, so I don't know until I get the either receipt or the statement that the charge has already taken place. So that gives them leeway to go over their budget line because department you get it are, after the fact. Right. But department heads are responsible for their budget. It is up to each and every department head to look at their budget, their budget is their Bible. They, I am actually working with our current software system so that I can set up a purchase order, my 
purchase order module so that um, if a department head gets close to his or her um, line item, if they if if they have a ten thousand um, dollar line item and they've already spent nine thousand, they try to make a purchase of, of twelve hundred dollars. The system will shut it down. You cannot make that purchase, and that ties into what I spoke about last week that you cannot make. Don't bring a purchase order to me after you've already made the purchase. You Absolutely. have to do it ahead of time. Absolutely. If I don't give you approval, do not make the purchase. It's just that simple. So those are things that are just getting ready to be put in place. They haven't been in place before. That is correct. I'm working with the co the, certain, um, the current software provider so that we can get this module up and running. Okay, so I think that's a great idea because if I notice on this budget, most of the departments are going over and various line items so to me it just appeared that there's no controls in place you know so people can go over their budget and then the following budget p period they're asking for additional money but they've already gone over so it one doesn't thing, help the prior year one thing we can do to kind of curb that is we can um do budget amendments we have not done that in the past but that's always an option and i just um you know some budget departments heads may not be as you know, smart enough to understand budgets and their controls. So it needs to be another control in place to monitor them because all of them may just not be so budget savvy. I'm not going to say smart enough, but just budget savvy. So it needs to be someone above them, I'm assuming that's you, that monitors what they're doing to make sure that they're trying to at least stay within their budget. Correct. Okay. Thank you. I um, have other questions. I just have to look at my notes. If you give me a second, if that's okay, board. Um, the chair will extend you more time, Adam. <laughs> so this is not like the general meetings at three min minutes. Thank you. Oh, uh, we have a six o'clock right after this, which yeah. is our regular board meeting. So be kind. Okay, it's going to be real quick. Yeah, I just want you know I have questions, and you guys went over four budgets, so. I just wanted to be able to ask questions. Um, in the media center budget, I heard the gentleman mention another person who helps him. Is his salary included in this media center salary? No, it is not. It's included in administration. You said a Mr. Tr Trish or something. Um, and it looks like he go out and interview, but he's just an administrative staff. Okay, okay. I think that's it for me because I believe that the board is, the trustees are, you know, really paying attention to the budget. I think that's a great idea that we're looking at it to make sure that we don't run into the situation that we're in now. So, you know, thank you for, you know, being very detailed with this. But is there another meeting where you guys report what your recommendations are for the 2018 budget after you meet with each department head how do we know what is the actual approved budget yeah that's where the um trustees will confer on final cuts and other adjustments and then the final budget will be submitted publicly oh okay great yes that that was it thank you so much is there anyone else before we close it out because we have to prepare I got to powder my nose for the next meeting. I'd like to make a, a motion to adjourn. Second. Trustee Muhammad? Yes. Trustee Stubbs? Yes. Trustee House? Yes. Trustee Henry? Aye. Okay, this meeting is adjourned. We'll come back for our regular board meeting at um, 6.30 p.m. Thank you. Six.